So Kair Elam was selected with a first round pick by the Buffalo Bills. I want to talk about kind of what he does well, what he does poorly, uh, just what were our expectations going in, quite frankly, with Elam and how has he met, exceeded or disappointed? Well, let's get into it. So first, let's look at his pro football focus grades. Uh, this is his PFF page from when he got drafted. So his college stats and Wow, that's a rough final season, right? In 2021, that wasn't very good. His coverage grade was 58.1. This was in the bottom quarter of college players in that last season. Run defense was good, but other than that, uh, yeah, PFF was not a fan of Elam, but several things to note here. For one thing, he does have a very good season. It was only in 310 snaps, but in 2019, had a very good year and still had a, a good year in 2020, although again, Usually a 77.4 grade doesn't get you drafted very high necessarily, but, uh, you know, uh, that's how PFF saw uh, Elam. It is worth mentioning, though, that when it comes to, P when it comes to uh, PFF grades and how well they indicate future success, corner is one of the worst indicators of future success. In fact, it's definitely not something I pay too much attention to when I do my draft evaluations, whereas like offensive and defensive linemen, uh, definitely something you should pay a lot of attention to. Some positions like linebacker pay some attention to, but maybe not make it your whole thing. When it comes to corners, you could just not pay attention to it altogether if you wanted, because it isn't a great indicator of uh, future success. At the NFL level, he had a, a solid year, a 64 Point six grade, I think, for a rookie. You're, I don't think the Bills are mad at that, necessarily. I think that, obviously, you always want uh, your first-round rookie to come in and be a superstar, but you understand, especially at the corner position, unless you're Sauce Gardner, it takes some time to develop. You have to, you know, get better. Again, just for context, uh, he ranked 58th out of the 118 eligible corners last season, so okay. Had a, a year where he looked like a player, looked like an NFL player, but not necessarily a star NFL player. Although also worth noting, if you look at his game-by-game -game stats, we're not going to go through each one, obviously, but I think just a couple things worth noting was that the best two games he had, actually uh, two of the best three games he had, but the best two-game stretch he had were the two playoff games. Uh, against Miami, a grade of 88.1. That was easily his best, only his only uh, grade above uh, 76, and it was 88, uh, but also had a good game, uh, 74 point two a grade against Cincinnati and, and had another you know 75 a grade in week six against Kansas City so seems like seemingly uh, when he plays good competition he actually gets a little better interestingly enough but let's start off with some negatives when we get into the film because I, well, I was actually fascinated by it so like, okay I get it had kind of an up and down rookie year but showed some flashes that's what I was expecting uh going back and watching the tape because again I watched a decent amount of care Elam during the season but you know uh you don't really evaluate one one player unless you simply just watch the tape on that one player you can catch some things here and there watching tape of the whole team for sure but the best way to evaluate a player is to sit down and watch tape of that one specific player and so for Elam that's what I'm doing and I was actually surprised at a lot of the losses that I wouldn't really consider terrible plays I mean there's nitpicks on these losses for sure like what's happening here it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside with Devontae Parker okay that's the situation. Mac Jones is going to take the snap. Parker is going to get to the outside, and there is no separation. But Jones is basically saying, hey, this is a size thing at this point. Uh, Parker is one of the better jump ball receivers in the league. That's why the Patriots went out and got him. You could maybe argue Elam could do a better job at playing the ball here because he does have enough separation, that, or he, I guess, uh, there isn't enough separation here that he can take a glance over at the ball if he wants to. That is an option on the table and maybe something that as he gets more NFL experience, he will learn how to do. But at the end of the day, I mean, Parker just kind of makes a great catch right here. I'm not going to hold that against Elam too much. Uh, again, would you like to see Elam, I think, just have better ball skills in general? Yeah, I think you would. I think that would make you feel better uh, if you're a Bills fan. But again, it's okay. If you're not giving up separation and you're forcing receivers to have to make very good catches consistently to beat you, they're not going to consistently make good catches. And you, that's the goal at the end of the day is to just not consistently give up yards. You're going to give up some yards. You're going to give up some plays. Just don't do it consistently. Also, something like this where, okay, going up against Chicago now, uh, Elam going up against a receiver who's on the top of the screen, uh, but he's going to run all the way over towards the bottom of the screen. And really just watch how this play plays out. Right when this play begins, it's going to take a long time for the ball to come out of Justin Fields' hands on this one. I mean, you're uh, going to have to be covering for a good chunk of time, and you know, uh, 
that's definitely going to be uh, you know tough for Elam in this scenario. I mean, as of right now, where I paused it, we are four seconds into the play, and Fields still hasn't thrown the football. I mean, that's just, you know, again, the play action definitely helped out with that. I think that was actually the key factor in allowing uh, Fields to have that time. But still, that's why play actions are effective, is it can give you more time to throw the football. So for Elam, again, if this is the bullet pass right here, I still don't think it's a great situation but Fields does a smart thing here throwing it over the corner who was covering the bottom of the screen uh so Elam technically gave up that completion you know that's what happened but I would also argue like Tredavious White probably should have came in and made a play on that one as well I would say that's kind of a bad play almost a worse play by White than it was by Elam so you know PFF gave e e Elam the yards and I think that's fair I think that's again Given how they use that stat, uh, it makes sense. Although it's also worth mentioning, uh, it's not a great uh, it's it's not a great stat passing yards given up for a corner. I think we all know that because so much of it is dependent on the play of the quarterback and the receiver you're covering. But again, these are big chunk plays Elam's given up, and these were kind of his lowlights last year, and they really weren't bad plays. Meanwhile, for the good ones, stuff like this, where I thought that he could at times, he really showed flashes of being a very alert player, and this is at that playoff game against Miami where uh, he's in zone coverage right here. That's the way this play is designed to work. And when he was in zone, meaning he's kind of forced to look at the quarterback, he made some really good reads. Well, watch out when this play begins. Again, you see how it's going to work. They're going to try to throw it over Elam. But the issue is Elam's just too fast, and Elam's just someone who uh, can cover ground so well. This is too risky of a throw to make. It's made anyway. Elam gets over, and he's able to intercept that pass right there. Uh, really good stuff from him to get in position, and then when he has to cover ground, be able to cover that ground and also just one like this where the ball's not going to go this direction but again that you can't control that all you can control is how well you cover the receiver going up one-on-one -on -one against Jalen Waddle, which is hard right that's a tough guy to cover one-on-one -on -one. that's something that uh for a rookie corner if you're getting beat trying to cover Jalen Waddle, that's understandable he's a really good player but one thing that I think just has to be said about Elam is, again, the guy ran a 4-3-9. So, uh, you know, always good to do that because then you, you uh, get credit for being a 4-3 guy, uh, even if it's 4-3-9. Uh, but, you know, because of that, he can keep up with some of these fast receivers like Waddle. But he doesn't just rely on his speed. Watch him create contact at the line to slow Waddle down enough. And then at this point, he really doesn't give up much separation that entire route on that one that's what Elam is capable of and really I thought last year had a good season I think that while there were some losses it's part of why it's just corners in general are so fluky uh is because a lot of it is dependent on the situation around you on who are you you know covering what's the quarterback doing it's hard to measure production at the corner position but I liked what I saw from Elam and I, I would expect him to have a better uh production season this following year. I'm not saying there were no negatives in his tape, but I thought he had a really good year. So yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.